know, you're a man, you know, if you do it more than someone else does. It's just gone too far. It's, yeah. They only think of sex as just sex. Pleasure, yeah. that's it. About 10% of the sexually active female young adult population has gonorrhea, gonococcal organisms. I thought I was going to be getting married, but when I found out that the father of the baby didn't want to have anything to do with me, that's when everything else went wrong. So many people think, I talk to so many people, just because you wait, they think, oh, you have no desire. And <laughs> that's not true at all. painful fall. That's how it is with sex. Do it at the wrong time, the wrong person, and you're in for a painful, and these days, even deadly fall. Kevin counsels teenagers. Sex comes up a lot when they're talking. It's a very, a very normal and natural feeling for two reasons. The primary of the two is probably for the fun. Uh, the other was for reproduction of the species. Pam is a clinical director who works with teenagers. It seems to be a real big issue nowadays. It's like, well, I need to make a statement to my boyfriend or my girlfriend to let them know that I'm okay. It's like a stamp of approval today that if I have sex, and that makes me normal. That makes me uh, attractive to the opposite sex. And it's not that way at all. It's a really big responsibility. It's like, it's, like it's, like an every, it's like an everyday thing now, you know? Like the way they do it. Like they have condom commercials and all that stuff. I think a person should wait until they find like the most special person. It's just gone too far. It's, yeah. They only think of sex as just sex. Pleasure, that's it. You know, don't get being forced into doing anything. You can't just do it because it's also like mentally, it's not just physically, it's mentally. You might you might hurt yourself in the future. I had that food better than sex. <laughs> if you're gonna do sex, you're gonna get eight. Sex is everywhere. Magazines are cover to cover with it. Stuff about everything. Omar has seen all the music videos and all the magazines. He's a sprinter in his first year of college, and there's a lot of sex that goes on when you're in college. But Omar isn't a part of it. Oh, yes, I've been to this. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Yep, I have. Um, I've been tipped far, far, far beyond, <laughs> yeah. But I never went all the way to it. I never jumped right into it. I, I feel I, I feel if you do it that night, okay, say 8 o'clock you do it, next morning you, you've lost something you can never do again. Oh, it was fun the night before at 8 o'clock. Oh, yeah, you had fun for an hour, two hours or whatever. But now it's the next day now. I see all my friends. Um, especially girls who do have sex. I talk to them because they're my friends. And they say, well, they gave them virginity up, you know, to a guy who said they loved her, and then he leaves. You know, it's just, it, it's, not, it's not what I feel it should be. I feel sex is something that should be saved for marriage. I think it's a gift that you could give only one time. Here is Miss America, Miss Bruins. 
Cheryl is considered one of the most beautiful women in America. She was Miss America. And let's face it, anyone who looks like her would be harassed and hounded a lot by guys about sex. And she'll tell you she was tempted by it when she was single, but she always said no until she was married. I chose to be clean before myself and, and let sex, as, as tempting as it is, and it's a lie to say it's not tempting, it's stupid to say it's not tempting, it's there. And it's very tempting because girls especially, sex is a place that they can feel um, uh, surrounded and comforted and loved, and even though it doesn't last, for that moment they feel like they've been uh, protected. But you know what? It doesn't last, so it's no good to you. The next time you're looking again and looking for another answer. I've dealt with a lot of kids, particularly girls, that have said, you know, I, I really never wanted to, to get into it this way. You know, I remember I was doing a group with a bunch of girls once, and one of them said to me, you know, I can't ever get back my virginity. As bad as I want it, I can't get it back. And I, I remember just thinking in, inside, yes, it's such a big issue for those guys out there that it's like, you know, if they could just stop and think, you know, I don't have to. I can say no, just like with the drugs. You can say no to the sex part, too. I feel sex before marriage takes the love out of it. Um, emotionally, I don't know, it kind of breaks it down. It does. It, your next relationship isn't going to be as as wonderful or as good as the first one because you gave that away you know, because you're having sex or just having just to have fun I don't I just feel it's like going out and playing baseball that's what's looked at nowadays it's not a big thing I have a lot of friends who are 15 16 years old who already have and I feel it does do a little damage it, it um I don't know I can't really explain it it, it takes something away This is a place you don't want to find yourself walking into. It's a VD clinic. You'd be surprised how many people our age end up here. Dr. Bruce talks to teenagers all the time who find themselves in trouble. There are moral, there are moral and value reasons to refrain from sex. Uh, there are medical reasons, which you're asking me about, uh, have become, I'd say, more intense or, or more uh, concrete. Uh, what's happened with AIDS, there's a, there's a, there is a big awareness of AIDS in the teenagers I talk to. They seem to be aware that uh, this, this is a life and death situation. It's high risk. Uh, but I think people have forgotten about some of the other diseases. Uh, syphilis, the incidence of syphilis is way up. Uh, the incidence of gonorrhea. There are other diseases like chlamydia, uh, venereal warts, which is a viral uh, type uh, disease. And these are all very very common in sexually active teenagers and young adults. You look, when you, you watch TV or movies, they don't show consequences. When somebody gets drunk, you know, they're up the next day, they're at work, or if, you know, someone has sex, you never see somebody end up in the, uh, in the venereal disease clinic, the uh, sexually transmitted disease clinic. You know, they don't show consequences, and it reinforces to a lot of kids, you know, this is just, this is, it's cool to do this and uh, you just do it. I mean, music is going on now that talks about it. Um, I think when it comes down to it, it's just that it is a thing that's just taken lightly. People say, oh, just use a condom or whatever. Of course, a condom doesn't stop, doesn't stop the virus, I've heard too, but it's, 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 it's taken as, as heavenly, I think. It's not, it's not scaring people as much as I think it should. So the guy doesn't have a sex drive. Hormones are hormones. How can you deny that? Sex is normal. I was always voted most popular. I was always voted friendliest. And yet I was the clean one. You know, we think, we tend to get the lie in our mind that we have to be like everybody else for everybody to like us. But that's not true because those people don't even like themselves. They're certainly not going to like you if you're like them. They like you because you're different. They like you because you're together. Sex? I don't know yet. But I'll find out soon. Being a guy, I think that uh, guys should get it whenever they can. Well, it seems like a lot of people do it these days. And I just think that you should like wait till you're married. I think it's really overrated from what I hear. Because everybody's out there trying to have sex and for 
just the purpose of having it, instead of finding the right person to spend your life with. When you have sex with someone, it's like having sex with everyone they had sex with in terms of the, the uh, organisms that you're, you're being exposed to. Uh, and then, in addition to uh, the diseases you might catch, there's teen pregnancy. Which is exactly what happened to Shelly. When I found out I, that I was pregnant, um, my whole life changed. I was, um, I thought I was going to be getting married, but when I found out that the father of the baby didn't want to have anything to do with me, that's when everything else went wrong. Um, I didn't put on, on any makeup for work. I just would brush my hair and I would go. Um, I've even called into work a couple times saying, I can't make it, I'll be late, I'm crying too hard. And um, they understood. Um, and. It was a time when I was just so lonely. Um, my parents couldn't help me. They didn't know how to. Um, and it was just a loneliness that it was hard to describe. It's like just like with one drink, it never ends with just one drink. It always ends to, after they kiss you, you get kind of tired of the kissing, then you want some tongue, and then you get tired of that, and then it's on the neck, and it's fondling. And before you know it, you know, you're having sex and you're stopping and you're thinking, well, how did I ever get to this point? And initially, it, you may think, oh, my gosh, you know, this, this felt good or this was great. But it always follows with a lot of guilt and a lot of remorse. I've never seen an adolescent yet that when you really begin to deal with their issues, that they've said, you know, Pam, I, I really regret that I did this. You know, when you really get to know them, it's like getting through all that that mud and that stuff, you know, and they say, you know, I, I wish I could get it back, and they can't, you know, it's gone forever. So how was your day? Did you work hard today? Yeah, yeah, I gave, turned in my final grades, yeah. and... Tim and Kara don't have that kind of guilt. Way before they met, each decided, on their own, to wait <laughs> for marriage. Difficult. But that would, to that would mm -hmm. totally affect our relationship, I think, if we would have just... Uh, if our whole relationship would have been just based on physical and having sex, I think that would have ruined our relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and by the time, and when we made that decision, we both knew that we really cared for each other, and we're and we're looking down the road for maybe a long-term mm -hmm. commitment. So. And you know what else too? Um, I'm just thinking of this just in terms of how guys' hormones are just going crazy. I think even more than girls' hormones. So thank you. <laughs> it's true, but for Tim to wait told me something about his commitment to me and about the, how much I could trust him. I've waited 19 years. I think I can wait another four years, definitely. Why? Why do you want to do that? Because I feel if I feel, I feel if I find somebody that I'm in love with, if I find a girl that I feel so deeply for, I've waited all this time. I mean, what's a little bit longer to have sex? Why can't you wait till marriage? What's the big old rush into it? You know, there's, there's, you can hold that person. You can love that person. You can kiss that person. You can do other things besides having sex and, you can, and I feel it's it's not a big deal you can wait we, we'd, we'd start kissing you know we'd be making out and rolling around the couch and go oh, wait a minute you know this is this is gonna this is not this is not leading where we want to go and so we'd have to kind of you know push ourselves apart and sit on the other end of the couch or something. But I think too when you make a decision about what you want to do and if and since we had made the decision that we did not want to have sex before we were married it's easier to get out of those situations than if you haven't made that decision before you go into it. And I decided that sex was my choice, not peer pressure choice, not my friend's choice, not my boyfriend's choice, not my school's choice. That was my choice. And maybe I'm just stubborn enough and just persistent enough that nobody has a right to make any decision for me. And I just never let anybody make one for me. And I stood strong, and even in things, as per, especially in sex, my girlfriends would run into me when they were scared to death and didn't know what to do. And they'd ask me to pray for them. Some studies show one out of three um, sexually active uh, college-age females have uh, the virus that causes venereal warts. Uh, so these statistics, that's, um, you know, they seem very high, 
but what they tell you is that when you're sexually active, you're a member of another high-risk population that's at high risk for sexually transmitted disease. No one is saying the desire to have sex isn't there. It's there for a reason, a good reason. Disease, screwed up relationships, screwed up self-image, all that stuff comes from doing sex when you're not supposed to, before marriage. I know a lot of people you know are having sex, and they're also playing with fire, and these days, even playing with death. Decide right now that you're going to say no to sex before you're married. Omar is, and Cheryl and Tim and Kara did, and they're not complaining.